let's talk about what I read in October. Hello fellow book nerds, this is Gabby and today I am chatting to you about all the books I read in October. So it's a wrap up, I've got nine books, I have made videos for many of them so hopefully we won't keep this too long. Um, but yeah, I feel good, it was a good month, a lot of good reading. Um, some mediocre books I feel like but then maybe my favorite book of the year. So I feel like the scales are somewhat, somewhat balanced, but let's chat about it. So of course, October is a spooky month and I love making content for like spooky books. And I love just like, I don't know, changing it up every year, but doing something spooky, some kind of theme thing. And this year I decided to read some horror books. So Goodreads had this list of like 66 best horror novels in the last three years, according to readers. And um, so I thought, perfect, let me do some of that. I'll read six books off of that list that are gonna be decided through a random number generator. Some wins, some losses. You can see the video up above. Let's talk about that video, the books I read. Let's go from least favorite to most favorite. I already kind of did this in the video, but not many people watch my vlogs. So let's just chat about it a little bit. And if you want to hear more, you can head to the vlog. But my most hate, hate, it's hate? Yeah, hated. Book of the vlog was Just Like Mother by Anne Helsel. So this book um, is about this woman who, when she was a little girl, was in a cult that worshipped motherhood. She got out of the cult and then reunites with her long lost cousin who was also part of the cult. It's super motherhood, motherhood, what does it mean, who wants it kind of thing. I didn't find it super scary. I did find it scarily predictable though because I feel like this whole book, I was not really surprised at pretty much any point of it. So I ended up giving it two stars. For me, that's pretty harsh. I just felt very mad about the whole thing and didn't want to really keep reading, but the audiobook helped me get through it. Then I would say The Last House on Needless Street by Katriana Ward. The author has a lot of famous horror novels and I think there's gonna be like a movie adaptation I've read in the comments. So, you know, that's all great. Um, this book was a chore to get through um, because it, it was some difficult subjects that were discussed. But essentially The Last House on Needless Street, we follow Ted who is a an older man, well, older, he's like middle-aged man. He lives alone with his cat and clearly there's some disturbing things going on and then we follow another character who uh whose sister went missing 10 years ago and Ted was one of the suspects but he never got charged and then the third character is Ted's talking cat it's it was really a slog for I would say about half of it and the second half was pretty bad shit but like I'm not sure in a good way. So having reflected on it, I'm going to give it 2.5 stars, even though I gave it three stars in the video. I just felt like it was questionable, but it had some empathy. I don't know. I just didn't particularly enjoy it. I thought it was disgusting for sure. Scary in a very, I don't want to be reading this kind of way for a lot of the book. A lot of the book though was very boring and slow. So that kind of put me off. Let's talk about Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. So Just Like Home is about a woman who has a very fraught relationship with her mother. Something definitely sketchy happened in her childhood, but we don't know what. And um, now after like 20 odd years of not seeing her mother, she goes back home because her mother calls her and says that she's dying and she would like um, the main character to come back home and take care of her. Again, not particularly scary for a horror category. I feel like I've definitely read some way more disturbing stuff just by myself having picked them up. I thought that one did have way more compelling story. I do think some of it was a little predictable than some of it was not. I just think it didn't make particularly strong lasting impression on me so that's why I'm just kind of feeling very mediocre about it. There was like a scene or two where I was kind of freaked out but it was because I was home alone, it was dark 
and someone rang the doorbell and I didn't expect anyone to ring the doorbell so that disturbed me. I, I think that one's a three star, very run of the mill. I would not go out of my way to recommend it to anyone, I don't think. Then I would put Lone Woman uh, by Victor Lavelle. It's set in 1915 with follow a black woman as she goes from California to Midwest slash South. I don't really know that well American geography, but she goes um, because uh, she's escaping something from her past. Her parents died. She burned the bodies because she doesn't want anyone to know what happens. And she travels um, because she's read in this like magazine that um, there's a place where uh, people can kind of get land and a house and if they cultivate the house and prove themselves then they get it for free and she sees this as her future and along the road she, the only thing she brings is this old uh, steam trunk that is incredibly heavy and very clearly something is dodgy is going on with it it's kind of a creature horror um the whole thing is like what's in the box quite enjoyed this one i do think it had way more it had more surprises had a really interesting setting in this small town um i think it was interesting to follow like three characters of color were in this predominantly white town and how that played out um, so in the end, I did find this one compelling and that one grew on me. With time, I still wouldn't say it was like my favorite or anything. And I probably won't be thinking about it too much. Um, but it was a solid three star and like, it was, it was all right. All right, finally moving on from the all right to the actually good. So you will notice it's two books out of the six I read, which is sad times. But uh, Haunting of Alejandra by V. Castro was a book I've been looking forward to reading, but it just came out in the UK, like on the 17th of October, whereas in the US it was out in like April, which I hate when they do that. Anyway, we follow um, a one mother of three living in Philadelphia. She's originally from California, Texas or California, Texas, I think, and moved with her husband to Philadelphia for his work. I think she's half Mexican and um she's quite severely depressed she um doesn't really feel happy with where she is in life and and having to just take care of the children and her husband works she doesn't feel listened to by her husband um so the whole thing is quite a stark look at getting out of that depression and finding your place in the world and finding hope the big part of this i guess is that uh the main character thinks that she's being haunted by La Irona, um, who's a legend of a woman who drowned her children and now is looking to um, drown some more. So yeah, I found this book really amazingly written, super harrowing, but super compelling. And just, it, it gets really hopeful. And it, I like that it went from really low to high. And um, and yeah, I, I wouldn't say I had a good time because it wasn't like a happy-go-lucky book. Um, but I do think it did... Um, existential horror pretty well um a lot of fears of like motherhood were also incorporated into this book i think he was done more originally and more interestingly and had a more unique spin on it than just like mother so overall like really enjoyed this and would recommend if the topic of depression and taking your own life doesn't um trigger you in any way then I would recommend it if not, it's quite like a heavy subject book. But I thought it was written really well. I thought the characters are really well, well fleshed out and like, I really appreciated having read it. I would give that one four stars. And then for the best book I read in that video and probably my favorite book of October, Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Canas. I'm not actually sure I'm saying Isabel Canas properly. Gang. Okay, I was wrong this whole time, so that's embarrassing. Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. I have also read from the author Hacienda. I really wish I owned it. I think it probably has this amazing, like, textured feel to it, just like this book. I had to buy a physical copy because um, the ebook is, like, not available anywhere in the UK. I don't know what's up with that, but the only way I could have gotten it was buying the £20 physical copy. And I have absolutely no regrets. I am so happy I own this book. It's absolutely gorgeous inside and out. And let me tell you what it's about. So in this one, we follow uh, Nina, our main character. Um, she is a daughter of a ranchero. Um, so she's like relatively wealthy. This is set in Mexico, like 1800s. 
I think. Yeah, 1840s Mexico. Um, and she, yeah, she's a daughter of a ranchero. And growing up, she had this best friend called Nestor. Okay, so he's the son of a vaquero, which means like his dad basically takes care of the horses, I think. Um, and he's considered like lower class and poor. They were best friends when they were young. They fell in love as children. When we meet them and like, I guess the prologue, you could say, of the of the story, um, they're both like 13 years old and they get attacked by a creature of the night. Nina gets really badly injured uh, and Nestor thinks that she died. So he ends up escape, like running away. Um, because he thinks he'll be blamed and Nina um, ends up surviving. Now it's like 10, maybe even, yeah, I think about, about 10 years later, um, Nina thinks that Nestor ran away and left her, uh, whereas Nestor is convinced that Nina is dead. Um, as you can probably tell, they're vampires, um, but it's also about um, Mexico's fight for independence. And I just absolutely love this. This is the most, like, quintessential gothic romance i just think it's just this harrowing story of love persevering and um these like super dark circumstances and love trying to thrive like it kind of reminds me a little of jane austen not not in any sense of the writing or the setting or anything like that just the epicness of it i think um the love story and the circumstances and class standing in the way and two souls just connecting um it's probably quite reminiscent of like wavering heights and things like that as well um but i absolutely loved it like i am a sucker for gothic horror and this book just delivered on so many levels i found it so incredibly romantic there were so many passages where i just felt like overwhelmed by the love and and what they felt and and i guess my only thing that i thought could could maybe have been more fleshed out were the vampires the paranormal element of it but i still really liked what they had to say and what the purpose of them was in the story so like overall really really great time five stars i cannot wait to like talk about this book and recommend this book and kind of wish i did a dedicated review of it but Still, it's on that vlog, so you can just see me lose my absolute mind. So those are all the books I read for that video, and the three other ones are also for content. I swear, in November, I have way more. I'm just reading for fun, so this will be this will be a bit fuller of stuff. But uh, I've read Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare, which is newest in her newest series not connected to shadow hunters uh we follow a prince his double ganger and a jewish coded healer and they live in this mythical place of castellan i had a relatively good time with this one i gave it four stars initially having thought about it i think it's more of a 3.5 because there was nothing overtly unique about it i feel like it was slightly disappointing on that front because i just felt like you know it'll be more of like something memorable whereas it was enjoyable but i just don't think it quite brought the the fun there and the yeah it was enjoyable it was good as a first book in a series i'm interested to see where it's going but i wasn't like mind blown by it by or anything but i have like way more detailed thoughts in my video uh i also have spoiler section so i would go check that out if you're interested to hear like a bit more then at midnight is the darkest hour by ashley winstead and i loved it i thought that was such a good book oh yeah so that was the only other five star i gave that month midnight is the darkest hour ashley winstead's new book ashley winstead wrote in my dreams i hold a knife and last housewife and some fool me once i think like a romance book that i haven't read um but this one is set in a small super ultra religious town in america and we follow a main character who is the daughter of a preacher and um her best friend in childhood was this like social outcast son of the devil bad boy troublemaker we fast flop back and forth between now and like her teenage years she's i think 24 now or something happened uh way back when and now now in current timeline they find a dead body in the bog um and she is really worried about that dead body and burying some of her hidden secrets 
So that was a five star, really loved it, really great book. Again, I have a review where I talk in details what I liked, what I didn't like, what kind of themes there are in this book, but I just think it was such a good book. I enjoyed it thoroughly and Ashley Winston just keeps on winning. And I feel like the of the last couple of weeks, the theme is offers I've really loved their book once, just like hitting it at home again because there's um I just actually read Starling House by Ashley uh, by Alex E. Harrow and I've posted my review. I read that in November though, so it's not pertinent to this video, but I'm just saying like offers delivering time and time again, basically. And the last book was Bone Shard Daughter, oh sorry, Bone Shard Emperor by Andre Andrea Stewart. This is a uh, second book in the, the Drowning Empires series. So the first book is with Bone Shard Daughter, and it's Bone Shard Emperor. In book one, we follow a main character who's the daughter of the Bone Shard Emperor, who um, rules this mystical kingdom and he can build these things called constructs that are powered by bone shards taken from people. She's just in his tutelage and uh, there's a whole empire that's um, trying to revolt. Then in this one, uh, this is book two, I'm reading this for the Read Along Queens Read Along. I think we should have maybe called it something else, but whatever, Read Along Queens newest read along uh i discussed this on kira the book bella's channel so we can go check that out we're talking about book three in november so if that's something of interest make sure you check it out i gave it 3.5 i thought it was okay i i thought it was probably first half was slightly boring but i actually enjoyed the whole thing and it's like quite an interesting series um but i'm scared for book three because i've heard bad things so I'm cautiously excited to get there. But that's it from this video. I talked about all the night books. Again, maybe you didn't make it to my vlog. I would actually recommend watching that over this probably because it's it's really fun. It's one hour long. The, the raw footage was one hour 40 and I was like, oh my, oh my, oh my. Um, but I, I got it down to, for, to an hour for you. So anyway, if you did watch that video, thank you so much. If you watch this video, thank you so much. Let me know what was your favorite book you read this month and least favorite. For me, the favorite will have to be Vampires of El Norte, of course, but I also really like Midnight is the Darkest Hour. And my least favorite would be Just Like Mother, I think. So yeah, let me know what was your favorite, what was your least favorite. I love to hear from you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you would comment, like, and subscribe, I really, really appreciate it. It really helps me out. But that's it from me and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!